Hello and welcome to our second video in optics. Today we'll talk about law of reflection and refraction. In our last video, we observed that light travels in a straight line in a homogeneous medium. Using that fact, in this video, we'll discuss how we can describe the behavior of light while it goes into a different medium. If we are able to do that by simply observing few experiments, we will be able to formulate laws without worrying about the exact nature of light. The section of optics which deals in such laws are called geometrical optics. Now when a narrow beam of light falls from air onto the surface of water, some of the light can be seen to be reflected back at an angle alpha. And some of that light penetrates the water and at angle beta. We call this refraction. Let's define these angles first. So this angle I here, we are going to call it I is equal to angle of incidence. This angle alpha is called angle of reflection. Similarly, we can define this angle beta angle of refraction. If we know all these three angles, we should be exactly knowing how the light is traveling in one medium or another. Now, the whole idea of this video is to establish the relationship between these angles so that we can analyze the behavior of light in different mediums. Now, the obvious question to ask is, that if the light is coming like this, how much of that light energy is getting reflected and how much is getting refracted. So let's try and figure that out. Suppose a total energy E is coming towards the water and some part is getting reflected and we are calling it ER and some part is getting refracted, we are calling it EREF. By law of conservation of energy, we can say that total E is equal to E reflected plus E refracted. All the material in the world follows this conservation law. Some of them are better reflector of light whereas some of them absorbs light better. Usually the transparent materials such as water, glass etc. they allow the light to pass but metal reflects a light a lot and they are called good reflector. In order to know how good a reflector is, we can define a reflection factor. A reflection factor is nothing but is nothing but how much energy is getting reflected divided by total energy which is incident. A good reflection factor, which means a met like metal, etc., will have higher reflection factor. Now the reflection factor depends on the structure of the surface, the composition of the radiation itself, the angle of incidence and many other factors. However, in other, while another condition remains constant and only the angle of incidence is changed, we can see and find from the experiment a table like this, which says that as the angle of incidence is increasing, the total reflected energy increases while passing energy or refracted energy decreases. This is just to keep in mind that how the reflection works uh, in case of uh, from the point of view of energy propagation. Now, as, as I said towards the beginning of this video, the aim of this course is to find 
the relationship between i alpha and beta so that we can formulate very simple law using some experiments so here is an experimental setup consists of optical disc which has an angle mark from 0 to 90 from this side and 0 to 90 from this side as well as as a light source from where we can get a ray of light on a mirror m so this is a light source when emitting a light we send a light ray like this and the mirror will reflect it and our aim is to find angle i and alpha and by doing this experiment several times we will be hopefully able to find a good relationship between them so this is the incident ray and this is the outgoing ray and we know that this is angle i and this is alpha as we defined as angle of reflection Snell's found that after doing this experiment at different angles that always i is equal to alpha this means that the light ray coming will always reflect at the same angle from the normal so so this is the first part of law of reflection the uh, angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection so let's write that down angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection this is the first part of stays law of reflection now before we move on there is another point which is very important suppose we have a light ray suppose we have this mirror and the light ray is coming from this direction and getting reflected and as we said we measure this angle from the normal which is perpendicular to this which means that this angle here basically 90 degrees are perpendicular and we are going to measure the angles from the normal which is our angle of incident and this normal which is our angle of alpha and by doing experiments we can find this i is equal to alpha so there is a second part of the law which says that the incident ray which is here and then the reflected ray and the normal always lie in the same plane which means that they do not sort of bend inward or outward so for example if we draw for convenience let's say a cone so suppose we draw a cone from here in three dimension the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal will form on a plane what law of reflection is saying that this incident ray this and this will be always in a singular plane so we will not observe light coming out from here 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 or here but only here so if you look it from the top basically this is the point of instance right sorry this is the path of the light and this is the normal and this is the reflected ray they all will be on the same plane so we can write the modified and a better version of law of reflection like this incident and reflected rays lie 
in the same plane as the normal through the lifting surface at the point of incidence. Part one angle of flexion will be equal to angle of incidence we know that we measure this angle from the norm so this is what is uh, Snell's first law and we call it law of reflection now there's another point it also says that the the law is reversible which means it does not matter which ray we consider as an incident ray or a reflected ray so from this we can always send a ray from this side to and it goes to this side or from this side to this side and the law will remain valid which is called law of reversibility so either the ray is coming from this direction getting reflected or the ray is coming from this direction and getting reflected in both the cases this angle will be equal